All right, here we are in Brunchwork at Galvanize, an amazing, amazing space in the West Village. I'm here with Asta, who is going to be leading an amazing fireside chat today about personal branding, uh, making money doing what you love, and uh, hopefully we're gonna bring a lot of value to the community. Any words you wanna share with the uh, camera, Asta? Absolutely, I'm so excited to be interviewing Brian today. And he has some great tech talks, some great articles on how to actually build your story and your personal brand. So um, I can't wait. We can't wait either. See you there, BTV. See you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Can I just put this up here? Okay. First of all, thank you so much for everyone that's here. I know it's a Saturday morning, and so there's a lot of places you could. <laughs> Sunday morning, so there's a lot of places you could be. It's even more impressive that it's a Sunday morning here. Uh, so thank you so much for coming. I hope to be able to help as many of you as I can. We, I run a creative agency, media agency. We help people in the line tell stories that sell. So we help businesses of all sizes figure out what is the end strategy that you want, whether it be to sell you know, a, a glass of champagne or a folder or shirts or whatever the case may be. And we figure out how to deconstruct that messaging, working backwards from what do you want to do eventually and then how can we use the modern day tools that exist at our fingertips, creating digital content and then scaling that content across different platforms to actually make that happen. So we work with big businesses, we work with solo entrepreneurs, we work with all different kinds of, of companies, but in a nutshell, in a quick line, it's we are really good at figuring out how to help you tell stories in a way that sells and that sale can be a, a number of different things. Um, and so that's quickly, you know, a little background about who we are. Uh, we are here in New York City, but our team is completely bilingual. I spent six months of the year in Latin America. In fact, my voice is gone now because I just started, in January, I started a international entrepreneurship competition for, Latin, for Latino entrepreneurs, uh, where we spent the first five months of 2018 in Latin America looking for the best entrepreneurs. And we just awarded two of them seed funding and a, an all expense paid trip to the Silicon Valley. We've been there for the last seven days. I got back last night at 10.30. Uh, I have been talking for 15 hours a day for the last seven days, so uh, sorry for the voice. But so we have a completely bilingual brand, and we service companies here in the U.S. as well as in Latin America. Wow, that sounds great. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. That sure, my really pleasure. So you let's dive deeper into that. You mentioned helping companies with their strategy and with their story, customizing their story for them. So how exactly do you help them really understand what their customer story is and how can we do that here? Sure. So, you know, I had a chance to visit with some of you beforehand and, some, you know, the, the needs of this group are very different. Uh, you know, some of you want to start your own thing. Some of you want to do a better job for the company that you're working at. Some of you already have an equity fund that you're trying to figure out how to rev up. Um, I think that ultimately it's, the first thing is what I said in the beginning. It's you have to know what you're trying to get done at the end. You know, social media is a great tool, but it's only as useful as you are basically using it. So um, the first thing is, what do we want to happen? The second thing is you have to understand that, that it, the, the market is so busy right now and it's so saturated and there are so many people telling stories that really the only way that you have a chance of winning in a storytelling world in 2018, 2020, 2025 is, and we've seen this time and time again with clients and even with my own brand, is authenticity and honesty. And I know that these words are like, oh my God, again, with authenticity, but it is so true. I mean, you can only confuse people for so long. So if, you know, the first thing you have to understand is if your product is something that you really, really, really believe in, and that's probably like of the <laughs> utmost importance, like, do I really believe in what I'm selling? Because if you don't, the only thing that social media is going to do is going to, it's going to expose you faster. So if it's, you know, it's like people always say, uh, you're going to become a jerk when you have more money. It's like, no, the only thing that more money does is exposes more of the person that you already are. So if you're already a great person, more money is going to just highlight that greatness in different ways. If you're already a shitty person, you're going to become shittier. It's the same thing with a product. If your product is something you believe in and is really great, the faster that you tell that story with an open and honest heart, the faster people are going to, to respond to it. If you don't believe in it, the faster they're gonna to respond to it in a negative way. So I think that for anyone in this room right now that's trying to think through how to build a product or a service or an idea or whatever, you have to understand number one, what am I doing? Who am I trying to reach? Where do they live, right? Some of them live in LinkedIn, some of them live in Facebook, some of them live in still door to door, you know, door knocking kind of thing. 
Number two, what is my story? How do I tell it in the most authentic way possible? And then number 2.2 or 2B is, do I actually believe in this? And let me tell you right now, let me save all of you a tremendous amount of time and energy and stress and sacrifice. If you do not believe with all of your heart and soul and being and mind and heart and soul and being and mind and heart and soul and being and mind, in what you are selling, you will lose. So if you're in a place that's like, eh, I kind of believe in it, just quit now. Or find a way to make it better so that you can get to that point where you really, really believe in it. So in terms of monetizing your message, and you've written a book about uh, public speaking as well, it's your hour. It's important to get the message out there, yeah. but what advice do you have for people who shy away from same video content or social media? How from shy, that shy away from what? Shy away from video content or social uh, media. Yeah, yeah, I mean, listen, it's like, there's a couple different things, right? If you're trying to monetize your message, there's a couple different things that I think are really important. The first is the biggest mistake that so many people are making in the marketplace today is they're trying to monetize their audiences too soon. They're trying to go in for the kill too soon. They're trying to go in for the kiss within the first minute of the first date. And, and people will sense that. If you have built a platform just to sell something, then they'll be able to sense that. So the first, the first I'm going I'm to kind of answer this in, in phases. The first phase is you have to understand one thing, that your audiences are everywhere. And this is the exciting thing, and you know, I'm sure Eric will talk about this a little bit as well, but like, the fact is, we have never lived in a better time ever in the history of the world to monetize our message, ever. But you have to do it right, you have to do it smart. So, you have to understand that, that the, the people that you're trying to sell to are living in different platforms. They're living in an Instagram world, and in a Facebook world, and a LinkedIn world, and in a YouTube world, and they're consuming podcast audio content. But th when they're in these places, their mentality is different, right? When my grandma, well, my grandma's not on Facebook, I don't wanna lie. When my aunt, who's 65, is in Facebook, she's not looking to buy something necessarily when she enters. So you have to talk to her as if she's not looking to buy something when she enters, right? When I'm on Pinterest, maybe I'm looking for more creative ideas. So if you're an inter interior designer, maybe that's a good place to start to send people to your LinkedIn or funnel people to different places. But the first thing you have to understand is when you're monetizing your message, the first thing is you have to be everywhere. And that content everywhere cannot be copy and pasted. So you can't just put an article up on LinkedIn and then copy and paste that same article on six different platforms and expect to have the same thing. The second thing you have to understand is the value piece is extremely, extremely important. So you have to understand why are they there and how can I add, how can I make their lives better? Nobody is thinking about value. Everybody is thinking about sales. So whatever you sell in this room, find a way to start to create some content that's actually going to be useful for someone because the products and the services and the ideas in the world are all so similar, right? And so how do you set yourself apart? Well, when it comes time for me to buy a shirt, I can either buy a shirt from Zara, who's done nothing, or I can buy a shirt from your company, who time after time after time has sent me valuable content about how to get a stain out of a shirt, how to know if the shirt fits right, how to know the best combination of a shirt and suit for your first interview. Now, when that happens, I'm like, God, they're there for me. They're there for me as a human, not as a sale, not as a robot, not as a figure, not as a data point, not as a statistic. That, that's a really good point, I would say. In fact, I was gonna ask you that how, how should consumers uh, or businesses and individuals navigate the space when Sometimes it almost feels immoral that you're playing on consumer psychology <coughs> selling to them and making yeah. this pitch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, 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 here's the second part that I want to mention that I forgot to mention. So thanks for the question. You have to sell to be in business. I love selling. Don't get it twisted. When I, when I, when I talk in groups like this, afterwards they come up to me like, oh, what a relief your talk was, Brian. I, I hate selling too. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't do my job because if you think that I just told you that I hate selling based on what I just said about figuring out how to show how to wear a shirt and tie properly for your first interview, you're missing my point. I love selling. I love it. It's, and, and at the end of the day, this is the point, and I have a lot of friends, right, that are like very, very cool creatives and like, dude, I'm a CEO, and they're like, you know, they use Instagram, and they put like CEO of this company on Instagram. I'm like, all right, cool, how much money did you make last month? Well, you know, bro, I'm like building. Okay, how much money did you make last month? None. 
How much money have you made in the last 12 months being the CEO of your t-shirt company? Uh, we sold like two or three shirts a month. I'm like, bro, you're fucked. Like you live in New York City and you're selling two or three t-shirts a month, right? So you have to be selling at all times. What I'm suggesting is this is, this is, what, this is the difference between what's called pull and push marketing. And it's the future of marketing and we're seeing it over and over and over with clients of all sizes where it's, you give nine out of 10 or even less than that, you give six out of 10 touches of immense value and then you offer a sale, you are gonna con your conversions are gonna completely skyrocket. Because what most people are doing are the nine out of 10 sales, nine out of 10 pushes instead of pulling in. So you have to sell and if you don't, and, and that's where, like when I started this conversation, if you don't believe in what you're selling, you'll never sell it. Because sales, are, it's, it's, hard, it's a hard thing. It's, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of rejection. And if you don't, at the core of your being, believe every, with every ounce of your cellular buildup that this is gonna help people, you're completely finished. But you have to sell. So on that note, any advice on how best to sell? Well, the first part I think is just this, this idea that you've already built a tremendous amount of value. You've already built a tremendous amount of trust. You know, personal branding and branding in general is, is, a, is a buzzword right now, and it's been a buzzword for a long time. But when I think about, when people say to me, Brian, how would you describe branding? What is, what is branding? How do you define branding? Branding is simply this. What do people say about you when you're not around? That's your brand. What do people say about you when you're not around? You know? And so the, the best advice for being a good salesperson is to have people say nice things about you, and it's actually way easier than you think. You just care about them more than anyone else. I'm not the smartest person in the room or the world, or not even close, but what I can consistently do better than everybody else is I care more about my client, I care more about the user, I care more about my audience than anybody else, and people can feel that, and when it comes time for them to make a purchase, they will come to you because they trust you. Branding equals trust, and the second you can get trust is the second that you win. And so the first thing is, is that. The second thing is you have to always be selling something. And what I mean by that, and that sounds kind of hyper, you know, counterintuitive what I'm saying right now, which is every single one of your platforms that you are using, social media, LinkedIn, any, anything that you have, your website, your WhatsApp, everything needs to in less than two seconds convey to the people that are following you, that are engaging with you, or that are learning about you for the first time exactly what it is that you offer. You do not want to make people work hard to figure out what you've done. If you've already won their trust because you've been in their Instagram feed and they love you, because you've been in their LinkedIn feed and they love you, and then it's time for them to actually figure out who the heck you are, right? And they go to your profile and they have no clue what you do. You've just lost all of that momentum and all of that work that you've put in because you have not made it easy for them to make a purchase from you including your closest friends and your family. My, one of my best friends about six months ago, I've had my business now for six years. Six months ago, we're having lunch and he's like, yeah man, so how's everything going? I'm like, oh, it's going great, it's going great. And he goes, bro, tell me, what do you do? And I'm like, bro, you are my best friend. How do you not know what I do? And he's like, I'm sorry, man, I'm just busy. And that for me was like a really big aha moment that like, he, I, I have no doubt in my mind that he loves me but he has no idea what I do because I didn't, and that's, everything's all my fault, right? Like, every, like the thing about the sale at the end of the conference, that was my fault, I didn't properly communicate. So the thing about sales is you have to make it easy for people to understand what you're selling. I sell the best vegan shoes in the world, Link. Okay, that makes sense, right? Yeah, that, that's a good point, making your message very clear, clear simple. And also value your human being. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So you also have entrepreneurs and businesses with their yeah. bitches. Is it is it different when it comes to branding for businesses versus individuals? Yeah. So I, I I advise over about a hundred different companies at this point, and we we've, we've been able to raise a ton and ton of money. It's funny. I've actually moved a little <laughs> bit away from talking about this just because I think it's gotten so like out of hand, uh, the fundraising world. But um, but. It's, it's interesting because I think that when you're pitching, how many people in here have a startup? Cool, about a little less than half. How many people are, are, are actively seeking venture capital right now? 
a hand, three or four of you. How many people have money already? Cool. So the two of you know this. I don't know how much you raise, and then maybe as you're figuring it out. I think that you know, right now in the VC world, there's a couple of things happening. Number one, I think venture capitalists are, are really, and I have relationships with a lot of them, and I've just started investing some myself. I think that venture capitalists are really looking for, for a couple different things when they're, when they're deciding if they give money or not. Number one, it's, it's the person that's running the company, right? Like the, the ideas and like I said, the ideas and the services and like, you know, my, I have an idea, it's worth $4 billion, give me 200 million. Like I'm like, you know, like, you know, like, okay. Like that means nothing to me, right? But it means a lot more to me if you're like, I, my company's worth $2 billion. Here's why I think it, because my last company I did this, we sold it for this. Uh, I'm seeing similar traction. So I think that the, the, the number one thing is don't be shy to talk about your personal business success and your personal business experience, even and especially if you don't think it's related to what you're doing now. Because it's actually, there's so many transferable skills, right? And so the first thing I would say is that, like you are, uh, you, you are what I am investing in, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is, the more data that you can talk with and the more traction that you have, the better. So speak in data plus emotion, right? It's, it's kind of like the, the equation that I always tell the startup founders. It's like, you have to be extremely passionate and excited about your project. You have to be extremely passionate and excited about you as a human and the successes that you've had in the past. But you also have to speak in terms of traction and data, not like it's a $4 billion market because everyone in the world is going to use it. It's not going to work. Right, but because here's what we're seeing already. Here are the users that we have already. Here's the revenue that we made already. And my best advice for you is to, you know, if you if you have some sales, talk about those sales. If you have some traction, talk about those tra traction. And um, and then the final thing I'll say about venture capital, and this is something really really important, and it seems to really hit home for a lot of people when I talk about this topic, is you as someone that's seeking investment have just as much of a right to say no as the investor him or herself. Meaning, here's what most people get caught up on. They get so excited and disillusioned and romanticized by the idea that someone just offered me a million, a hundred million, two hundred million dollars, that they all of a sudden completely forget to do any of their own due diligence. And you have now entered into a very unhappy marriage. Because let me, get, let me just make the, set the record straight for all of you. When you enter into a relationship with a, with a VC, no matter how nice he or her is, he or she is, and they are nice, a lot of them, and a lot of them are not nice, uh, you are now in a long-term relationship. And it's, you, are now, you are now answering to somebody. So if you do not feel great about that person in your gut, then you should explore why that is. And you should ask them questions like, how involved are you gonna be in this company? How involved are you gonna, not just money, but time and energy and resources. And you know, because you have to understand the math of this. There's 100 people in this room right now. If I'm gonna invest in, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to know that one out of 100 of you are gonna be successful. I'm gonna invest in all of you, and that spreads me very thin as an investor in terms of what I can actually do for you, and I'm just gonna hope and know, because the statistics continually show me this, that one of you are gonna hit it and I'm gonna make my return. I actually don't care at all about any of you. That's a little cynical, but it's, it, I, I, I like to speak truth and that's what I've seen time and time and time again. People get screwed time and time and time again with these relationships. So you have just as much of a right to say no, thank you, I appreciate your money, but I'm gonna move on as they do to say no, I'm not gonna give you any. That's great advice, thank you. Yes. So staying on the topic of technology you mentioned, you also are the chief correspondent for innovation for jobs. Yeah. And that's a hard topic with everyone worried that they can take away our jobs or what is the future of jobs look, look like. Yeah. Everyone has to, as you mentioned, transfer those skills. So can you talk about what future trends you, you see in the job market right now? Sure. I mean, so the Innovation for Jobs is a, is a think tank out of Stanford University. It was founded by Vint Cerf, who's the, the founder of the internet. He was, he's a big-time executive at Google. Uh, David Nordfors, who runs the Stanford um, journalism pro program, they, they hired me to, to help them think through kind of how to message their, their, their uh, conferences. And so, what, you know, here's the thing. It, there are so many exciting things coming. I mean, AI, you know, virtual reality, uh, you know, chatbots, voice, all of these things I think are very, very, very exciting. And, uh, you know, I, I, I educate myself the best that I can about them. The truth is this, we're still much further away 
from a lot of these technologies than for at a, con a mass consumer market user adoption than we think. And so I think that um, I spend basically all of my time thinking about what's working today and what will be working in the next 24 to 48 to 72 months. Um, so I don't know when the moment's gonna come where we can put in a uh, contact lens and then be climbing you know, Kilimanjaro, which is, is, is very possibly gonna happen in the next 10, 15 years. But what I do know is this, I think that social media marketing works. It's the most underpriced thing that we can do right now as a small business owner or as an entrepreneur or even as a big business. We've been seeing uh, some incredible results from Instagram ads and Facebook ads. So the first thing is, is if you're selling something, Spend 10, 15, 20, 25 hours the next month figuring out how to run Facebook ads. The amount of people that are running small businesses or that have an idea that they want to start to monetize that have never run Facebook ads is astounding to me. I can get in front, I mean, we just did this in Latin America for this competition. I could get in front of a thousand people for $7. And these thousand people are highly relevant people. I mean, highly, you know, they, they published an article about us in Entrepreneur Magazine I took, that mag I took that article and I ran it against journalists and employees of Forbes, USA Today, New York Times, Univision, Telemundo, and all of a sudden, now we have an interview with Forbes this afternoon. It, so it's, it's crazy how, how, how unbelievably advanced these ad platforms are. We just haven't taken the time to figure it out. We can retarget, guys. Like, I can run three different commercials that are one minute each about my shoe, right? And I can know who watched 25% of that, 50% of that, 75% of that, 100% of that video? If you watched three videos, if you watched all two minutes and 32 seconds of every single one of my three videos, you are interested in me. So now when it comes time for me to make that sale, I'm going to make that sale against the retargeted audience of the people that have watched 75 to 100% of my last three videos. It's just so much easier than it used to be when we paid $50,000 to put up an ad on TV that we hoped one relevant person might be chilling at 6 p.m. on their sofa looking for a pair of, it's just crazy. You know, and so, so, so Facebook and Instagram is the first thing. Second thing that I think we should all think about and something that we've really doubled down on, and in fact that some, a couple of different agencies in New York City here have recently hired us to do for them, is podcasting and the idea of audio. I think that if we're gonna talk about future trends, that's the one that excites me the most. We're looking very heavily into building out that division of our company. We do have an audio division right now. We have just a few clients. Um, you know, audio is incredible. How many people in here listen to podcasts? Raise your hand. <laughs> How many, keep your hands up if you don't mind, if you listen to podcasts. How many of you that listen to podcasts would prefer to listen to a podcast than watch a YouTube show? Every single one of you. That is what I'm talking, I mean, that is the point right there. Like, you, that is the, ta we cannot cook dinner for our family and, or take a shower or drive our kid to school or be in the subway and working and, work and watching a video. But we can listen to a podcast. We can clean our house, we can cook our food, we can take our shower, right? That's a whole new world. That's a whole other way of adding value. That's number one. Number two, and, and probably even more interesting and something that we're gonna look really heavily into, you know, I do think in the next two, three, four years, we're gonna get to a place where we're cooking and we realize that we have no more olive oil and we say, Alexa, uh, order me olive oil. Okay, would you like Barodi's olive oil? Yes. Okay, it'll be sent to your door tomorrow. That was six seconds. Now, how does Barodi's get their name in that search? It's really interesting to me. How do you and you, hey, Alexa, order me a shirt. Okay, would you like to order from J. Crew? No. Would you like to order from? Bonobos. Bonobos? Yes. How does Bonobos become the first and not J. Crew? Right, and that, that goes for, you know, Alexa, I wanna, I wanna see a house on the Upper East Side today. Okay, how does your small real estate company become the one that Alexa offers? As, would you like to see it with John? Yes, John has a listing today at 3 p.m. on 77th Street. Would you like to go? Yes, send adding to your calendar. Done, seven seconds, audio. That's the future trend that I'm the most excited about. All right, I'm gonna open up for the audience now, so those questions are going Hi, my name is Don, and uh, I founded Swoopy for Sweaty Movies. It is a disposable bra for boob sweat. You heard it here first. 
Um, it's awesome. Thank you. My question is, uh, you were talking about how based on the different platforms, people uh, expect to see different things, yeah. which is my experience. And um, you were talking about the podcast and video thing. And basically, I think that the YouTube audience and podcast audiences are slightly different. And how do you do that conversion and or do you record your video as a podcast as well so they can get that? Great question. So the, I, I love this question for a couple different reasons. The first is you're, you're on to something that I think is going to be extremely useful for all of you, which is hacking content, right? And so the, the, the first thing I would say is this. I figure out, I've basically figured out a way to hack all of my content. So I have a nice gentleman here named Mao. Say hi to Mao. Hey Mao. Mao is my video amazing extraordinaire and he has been with me every single minute of every single day for the last eight months. God bless him. And um, he films all of this. So, so let me just give you a practical example how this works. So this is going to be a video that we're going to put up on YouTube. And then I'm simply going to extract the audio from that video and I'm going to upload it to a podcast. So this is something that everyone's like, oh, but I have to be in seven different platforms, but that's so much work. It is a lot of work, but it's your marketing, right? Like, okay, it would be like you saying, dude, like I know marketing is important, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a 50% it's a of your business, right? And so I think, you know, yes, the, the, the experiences are different, right? So when you're thinking through a video, you basically do, you, you create a video and you consume a video for three reasons, right? You want to be educated, you want to be entertained, or you want to escape, right? Those are the three reasons that you watch a video. And so what we're doing hopefully is educating right now and maybe a little bit of entertaining, but you're definitely not going to watch this to escape, right? And so when you know, and it goes back to my original thought, when you know why you're doing what you're doing, Right? So if I'm you, give me an example, let's just jam on this for a second. Give me an example of a video that you would create that you would think about turning into a podcast. Um, talking about the business process, for example, and working your, with men. Your business process? Right. Of how it gets created and how it gets applied and how it gets... How men haven't taken me seriously and it's been hard to get the product manufactured. I could talk about that process and yep. how I made it work out. Yeah, perfect. And how did you make it work out in like a sentence or two? Uh, I joined a national organization and paid money to meet important people and represent myself more credibly. Yeah, perfect. So, you know, so, so that, that in and of itself could be both easily, right? You just sit down, you jam for five minutes, you talk about the process. That's a YouTube thing. You put a catchy title, a nice thumbnail, and then you can, just, you know, take that audio and put it on podcast. Where it gets a little bit more tricky is if, you know, and you have immense opportunity for creative like immense opportunity for creative output. Um, and, and, and some of that will not translate to a podcast, but you can sort of figure it out. And then, you know, a, a program like Podomatic or, you know, all of these different IT, uh, um, audio platforms will tell you how many downloads and listens you're getting per week. Podomatic is what I use, P-O-D-O-M-A-T-I-C. And, um, and, then, and then you can, you know, maybe you want to strategically every single week, maybe one week you want it to be about you just kind of talking about the process. The next week you test out some creative stuff uh, that was creatively produced for YouTube and then you put it on the podcast, see how your listens are that week. Um, when you're just starting, you want to get, you want, and all of you, this is a great, another great point, like all of you want to be collecting names, emails, phone numbers of all of your people that are following you anywhere you can because if tomorrow Instagram decides that you put up a, a, a song that's not copyrighted and kicks you off the platform and you spent the last 48 months building your Instagram profile, you're in trouble. Right? Or if tomorrow Facebook changes their algorithm and you no longer have the funds to produce Facebook ads in the same way, you're in trouble. If you've collected the information, then you have access to your people. And with access to your people, you can straight up ask them. I'm going to send you two, two podcasts this week. And you can do this in Instagram stories too. Which podcast did you like better? You can do a poll. Right? Have you listened to one? Have you listened to two? One is you more talking straight direct to camera. Two is more of a creative approach that you turn into a podcast. And then from there you can start to, uh, uh, it's crazy I know, but engage with your audience to see what they actually care about. Does that help? Cool. Other questions? Anything at all? Yes. You mentioned phone numbers, yeah. grabbing people's phone numbers. Yeah. What do you use phone numbers for? Uh, you, well, so phone numbers can be useful for a couple different things. When I'm in Latin America, everybody uses WhatsApp. Everybody. So if you have any international business aspirations, keep in mind that people use WhatsApp to do business, like set up meetings, negotiate. I've actually even sent contracts over WhatsApp. Send me the contract over WhatsApp. And I'm like, what? Um, so, so numbers are good for that. And the other thing is, if once you become more sophisticated in the business, you can start, and this is something that we're gonna probably build in the next six to 12 months, 
you can start to create um, these these kind of like exclusive VIP lists of people where you can start to get chat bots and you can start to get people opting in to your, you know, it's similar to like when you order off of Seamless, right? Seamless says your order is in process, it's on its way. And then after they deliver their food, how was your experience? How likely would you be to refer to somebody else? You can start to do that and they do that all via text, right? So it's just another touch that you can stay on people's mind. Good question. Okay, we're gonna. Oh, yeah, one more. One more. One more. One hundred. Don't 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 undermine my following. <laughs> oh, I no no no. I sent them DMs. Yeah yeah. Oh, I was I, I went in there. I was like you know I was like like literally I was like okay this person's following me and then I. Yo, what's up, Brian here? Let, let me know how I can help you. Thank you for following me. You are the, one of the pioneers. I think I even said something like ridiculous, like you are one of the pioneers. You are one of the first 100. You are in the top 100. I mean, I was ridiculous, right? <laughs> but, but like, it, that's fun. That's the advantage of being your own like, boss because you can do ridiculous things and you don't have to be like, oh, can I have this approved, you know? So, and, and people loved it, people responded to it. DM is, is everything, yeah, yeah. We have a fire. Oh yeah, I'm ready for yes. it. Yeah. So your favorite business book or podcast? My favorite business podcast? A book. But, um, I'm a big fan of a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm sure you guys know Gary V E E. He's he's the man. Uh, he's he's like a he is like a marketing mogul. He is very very inspiring. He has a podcast. I think it's called the Gary V Audio Experience. I listen to him. Best career advice is. Don't ask for other people for career advice. <laughs> Figure it out, fail, test, be in your own head, um, and, and be as close to your user as you possibly can. They are your mentors. They will give you every single answer that you need. Daily habit or routine that you're obsessed with? Right now I would say I'm obsessed with uh, figuring out, uh, I'm obsessed with lucid dreaming. Trying to figure out how to become uh, better at lucid dreaming. Yeah, I'm pretty into that. Oh, and I'm also like into veganism. I know that's like, I know it's like everyone's into vegan, but like I'm into like learning about that. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then last question How can the brunch work community help you? Oh, man, uh, you guys can just go after what you want with everything that you have. That would make me super happy. You know, I think that. Um, you know, and, and I'm sure you have my social and like I'd love you guys to follow Brian Rashid Global. I'm on every single platform. Um, but I think, you know, maybe if, if you, how you can help me, you could share the content that I, that I share. If, if this is helpful for you, I want to get in front of as many people as I can. But more than that, it's really, if you would figure out why you have not done what you know, and you know, every single one of you knows what you really want to do. You do, you know. And you're oftentimes confused about the excuse, the excuses are, are, are confusing you into like not getting started. If you could figure out why you're not doing what you want to be doing and then address that head on and then squash it and then go do what you want to do, that would be, that would make me so happy. Will you send us a direct message if we follow you? Yes, I will. <laughs> I will, if, okay, let's do this, ready? If you follow me in the next 24 hours, I will send you a video message. Because I can see this getting out of control. All right, we'll watch it. Thank you so much, Ryan. This Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you so much. If you're ready to build your personal brand and start to make great money doing what you love, please subscribe to my channel, hitting the button to the side, and we'll get you started in the world of BTV. Also, if you want to keep learning, check out the video below for more information on world-class content. Thank you for being here. We'll see you in the next BTV.